Hello, and welcome to Mythologica, your portal to the mythocosmos. I'm Dr. Stephanie Zachowski, co-founder of the Fates and Graces Mythologium, and our special guest here with us today is Sara Lovett, author of The Invisible Bones. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Sara. You're welcome. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Yay. Well, let's jump right in. Tell us a bit about what inspired you to write this book. Um, it came out of um, my living not the life I wanted to live. Um, I was um, in a job I didn't really enjoy. It was a corporate job that I'd had for many years and I wasn't in a point of happiness in my life. Um, I had a long-term relationship and so I was at sixes and sevens in my life. And I was very, feeling very disconnected. Um, and that, it was about that time, it was about seven, eight years ago when Facebook and all of those social medias were coming into play. And it felt more like disconnection than connection uh, for me. Um, so I decided that I would quit my job and um, reconnect myself. Um, and initially I wasn't sure what that was gonna look like, but with that Facebook social media kind of intensity, um, what it was telling me was I had 156 friends, um, which at that time was um, people I already knew, people I had been in plays with, people I'd been to schools with, um, you know, family, friends, that kind of thing. And a lot of them I hadn't seen in a very long time. And, um, you know, we would say a few things to each other in emails or letters or, you know, with, with Facebook, it was a bit more social. Um, but I decided to um, make some time and reconnect with them. So I quit my job and I got in my car and I decided to drive around uh, the US and uh, England and Cyprus um, visiting my friends um, one by one. Some of them I just had a cup of coffee with some of them I stayed with for a few weeks. Um, and I was blogging about it as I went, um, just so I could capture what was happening. Cause there wasn't really any clear intention behind what I was doing. Just there was this reconnection intention, but there wasn't really a, I don't, I don't know, what am I doing? Is this a gap year? What am, what am I doing? I've just, you know, given up my 401k. Um, <laughs> which, <laughs> quite alarming <laughs> at the time and now um but um so I was blogging about that along the way um and the journey was absolutely it changed my life it was uh, exquisite to find people that had been such a huge part of my life that some I hadn't seen for 30 years some I hadn't seen for 10 years 20 years and just to really be in communication and witnessing each other on where we are in our lives uh, right now and where we're going. Um, and it was so impactful. Um, I, when I returned, I took a year of my life. So I began it on my birthday, June 1st, and then ended on my birthday. So it was a, a set amount of time. It was 365 days. And then when I got home, I looked at like this thousands of pages of blogs that I'd written or journal notes. And um, I, just thought I would sit down and write it initially as sort of a nice thing for us all to have, you know, um, th these 156 people, you know, this is what we exchanged, this is what that looked like. Um, so that's what inspired the writing of it, just that it was the journey itself to reconnect with friends, which actually turned into um, more of a, a reconnection with myself. Um, is the journey that you go on is really never for the reason that you think. <laughs> um, and this was definitely um, something that took me off guard when I started to, to, um, to go over what, what that experience was being on the road and with those people who were, um, a lot of them, as we all do, um, have uh, events and traumas in our lives and they were witnessing themselves so wholly um, that it made me realize that I, I hadn't or wasn't um, witnessing that piece of myself. And I think it was seeing and living with them and speaking with them about what they were going through that was pushing all of these 
memories and emotions in me that were bubbling up to the surface. And, and that's what came out um, in terms of when I started to write the book. Um, I thought the main word would be we, um, but it turned out to be I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's such a fascinating um, exploration of friendship and, you know, picking up the book, you're like, wow, what a great story. She's jumping in a car, she's going all, <laughs> visiting all you know, doing all this stuff. And then when you're reading it, you're like, wow, this writing really took you down a path that um, mm -hmm. as a reader, you don't expect. And um, I'm sure it, you didn't quite expect it either. So that kind of puts me into my next question I wanted to ask and dig a little bit deeper because we have a lot of unions in the community. Mm -hmm. And in your book, I thought it was just this fascinating uh, exploration of active imagination mm. and this relationship that was such a curious and interesting thing to read. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about how that informed your storytelling. Sure, yeah. Um, so I suppose um, the trauma for me that I went back into was the trauma of abortion um, from at a very uh, young age. And that was something I had repressed and uh, it wasn't something I had really wanted to choose but chose um, and then repressed that event and never really spoke about it, talked about it to anyone. Um, and it just sort of, that it was just sort of back there, back there. Um, but as these things that that we don't want to um that we want to keep unconscious um they do tend to keep knocking and um it was certainly an event that i woke up with and went to sleep with every night um so in the writing of the book um initially when i wrote it it was just my voice coming out um but there wasn't much essence in it. A, a good friend of mine who is a writer, I would give him 10 pages and he would give it to me back and say, this one sentence on page three, that's what we want to know about. And that's the kind of one I'd hidden in the middle. So, you know, and surrounded it with narrative. Um, <laughs> so like, oh, this is gonna be something different. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't quite connect to it. And um, one of the exercises that I did was uh, dialoguing, which is when you, um, uh, you can dialogue with absolutely anything. So I decided I would dialogue with the child and have a conversation. Um, and it was through a little bit of experimentation with that, that led me to a much deeper active imagination where the result of that simple one page dialogue that I wrote um, was what framed the book itself. And so it became a conversation between he and I um, as we traveled that road um, with each other, it's like my Philemon, if you will, um, uh, the, the spirit of the depths definitely wanting that attention. Um, and he was with me in dreams and um, just lived in my fingertips, you know, as you're, because I, I wrote most of it by hand initially, not on the computer. Um, so, yeah, so that that conversation um, was the piece that helped me um, connect with the real purpose or intention of what the journey had been originally, yeah. as well as feeling that presence throughout the journey itself. But in the writing of the book, um, I was able to connect with this child that I had not had um, and raise him as he was raising me on the journey by sharing my life with him. So it was my, my way of connecting with, um, uh, well, to I think a, a healthier perspective um, from where the trauma had, had, had put me. Um, so I was able to, uh, to walk alongside this child and have a steady conversation and um, uh, really get to know him, if you will, as well as allowing him to get to know me, which is really me getting to know myself, um, of the word coming from this active imagination um, with the lived experience of the journey in my body. Um, so the two were conversing with each other and that's what 
led to the words on the page. It's beautiful. And it reminds me of uh, the idea of what myth am I living? Mm -hmm. And also, you know, what myth is living me? Mm -hmm. And bringing that into presence is a whole different relationship with that story. Yeah, I mean, it, I was definitely out of balance and living uh, someone else's myth. It certainly wasn't the one that I, that was true to me. It was something I'd imposed on myself. You know, it's like walking through a garden that's, it's just got glass all over the, the, the grass and you, you, you struggle through because that's where you think that you should be. And, um, you know, there's this beauty of, um, of your own myth that has been so um, pushed aside and you can feel it like an aura right around you and you just and then suddenly when that other voice came in it was just there it was oh okay slow piece by piece that glass was 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 just melting you know just melting away and um it's really important to be in touch with the balance of your own myth and and um, and really for me it was seeing how much of myself had been painted by someone else mm. and not allowing or reclaiming that yeah 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 for sure yeah it's good stuff <laughs> <laughs> you do, you do. Oh, all right. Well, tell us a bit about the journey that readers uh, will experience through your book. Um, so as I've said, it's a, it's, it is a journey. Um, so you're going to be meeting um, a lot of extraordinary people. And these aren't characters from a novel or a play. These are, these are real people. All names have changed, of course. Um, but they're all real people. So um, there's, there's the there's an essence I think that comes when you when you know that the people that you're reading about are living and breathing and struggling and 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 um walking through fear and anxiety and joy and absolute rapture um as 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 you are you know what I mean so there's there's that living breath that's throughout throughout the book um as I connect with them, we're all connecting back into each other again. So you'll see, you know, these connections that are not just coming from me, um, but are coming from within them. Um, and what I do is I realize how significant each person was that I was seeing and uh, each of them represented a different piece of what friendship meant to me. And so throughout it, I, I'm coining 26 different kinds of friendships that I felt on that journey. Um, so there'll be a curiosity, I would hope, um, or I would invite um, that when you when you read about these these people to see who in your own life you might be connecting with on that same level. Who do I have that's that's uh, that's um, that's like this person that represents that uh, that inspiration? Yeah, yeah. And it's really, it's a fascinating adventure, but it also reaches into such commonalities in the human experience. Um, and exactly, that yeah. Connects. And that was one of the things that really was, um, it was just astounding to me how, as I would meet people, we were, we hadn't seen or talked to each other in, you know, so many years. And we, we had all experienced the same thing, um, the same losses to different degrees, um, the same grief, we were uh, just all needing something, wanting to witness something um, uh, that it just, it just flowed, you know, like a, a river, it just, we, we just flowed with each other in and out and through it. Um, well, I commend you on such a create, just a courageous endeavor here and a beautiful yeah piece of work. So where can uh, listeners purchase your book? Uh, they can find it on Amazon and my website should be live sometime early 2021, uh, January 2021. And that is .com. Oh, Very excited for that too. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me today and having this conversation. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I know 
everyone will benefit from your presence here today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's been delightful. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.